righteous father we say thank you holy father we say thank you we bless the beauty of your holiness it is because of you we are not consumed the arrows are flying the day those that fly at night the pestilence of darkness you have not suffered us to have encounter with them because you have terminated them this is the moment of truth the time we've been waiting for father send down your word that will make a difference in our life in the mighty name of jesus give us your season word that we turn our story around is there any blind person here let that person see in this service let the lame walk those looking for a change of status let there be a turn around in the mighty name of jesus above all we pray for the spirit of wisdom we pray for revelation knowledge let our eyes of understanding be enlightened as your word come powerfully in this service put wisdom in our minds put understanding in our hearts all this we ask in jesus precious name we have prayed Let's give Jesus a round of applause and a shout of hallelujah. hallelujah. As we take our seat in heavenly places, say to your neighbor on your left or right, you are welcome to Living God Covenant Church. You'll be glad that you're in this service because God is said to decorate your flesh in the mighty name of Jesus. Did you listen to those testifiers? Wonderful. Testimonies are the acts of God. There is a proverb in Ghana. They say travel and see. If you don't travel out of your village, out of your state, outside the Nigeria, you will not fully appreciate what God is doing. You see the man of God that came to testify that when he traveled, he saw dead bodies, he saw all, all manners of things. A lot of things are happening. Especially in this time, perilous time. This is a difficult time. They call it the time of uncertainty. The time where people are no longer sure. Every other thing, every other ground is sinking ground. The only sure place is Jesus Christ. And you saw his testimony how he was happy that the young man New Christ. Every other ground is a sinking ground. The only sure ground, the sure foundation that you you will be happy, you will be delighted is for you to know God, to know Jesus. When you have Jesus, you have every other thing. You are on a solid foundation. Now we want to continue our series of understanding the wisdom of God for his mighty power. Tonight we are looking at Psalm 912, Psalm 912, 912 for those following our series. It is subtitled Overcoming the Enemies of the Wisdom of God. I said the topic is understanding the wisdom of God for his mighty power. I think we are looking at part four. Is it part four or part five? Part four, part four okay. We are now part four. It is subtitled Overcoming the Enemies of the Wisdom of God. Wisdom as we know it is too important. Very important. And the Bible let us know that it is the greatest thing that any person should desire. That is the principal thing. As we are told in Proverbs 4 verse 7. It says, get wisdom and get understanding. That wisdom is the principal thing. That in all you're getting, get wisdom and get understanding. And in Proverbs 3, verse 13, 14, 15, we are told that anyone that gets wisdom, hmm, if you get wisdom, then that thing, that thing you have gotten is greater than any other thing that you can think of. It is better than gold. It is greater than rubies. That is money. 
or any other thing you can imagine or think of. Wisdom is so important. And we are told in Proverbs 3 verse 19. He said, God founded the earth by wisdom. And he established the heavens by what? Understanding. You see, wisdom is critical. Wisdom is very significant. And also we know from Proverbs 24, verse 34 to 6, we are told <laughs> how important wisdom is. That it is by wisdom we can build our house. By wisdom, a house is built. Without wisdom, we cannot build our house. Can this matter that read Proverbs 24 for us? Three, four, let's enjoy it. He said, Proverbs 24 verse now listen. He said, "True wisdom is a house built." He said, "By understanding that house is established." He said, "By knowledge, the chambers of that house—that is, the rooms of that house—will be filled with all what, with all pleasant riches." Is it? Now, wisdom is too important for a fool to understand. Wisdom is too high. The wisdom of God is too high for a fool. A fool cannot understand wisdom. The wisest men on earth at the time, they were the Greeks. The Greeks, they were known as very wise people. To the Greek, they said Christ, Jesus Christ, is what? Foolishness. <laughs> that Jesus Christ is foolishness. The word of God is foolishness. And to the Jews, they said Christ is what? Is a stumbling block. Stumbling block. That Christ is preventing them. Christ is a blockade. It's an obstacle for them to serve their God. Imagine, Christ is an obstacle for them to serve their God. They want to serve God without Christ. Not with Christ. Without Christ. That is what they want to do. And for us, who is Christ? Apostle Paul said, with Christ, the crucified. That Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. To all them that are called, to we, the chosen ones, that is who Christ is. The power of God and the wisdom of God. So now, why is Satan overcoming the wisdom of God? Because if you have the wisdom of God, <laughs> you will be built. You will be established. You will enjoy life. You will enjoy the glory of God. And that is what Satan is out to destroy. He doesn't want you. He doesn't want you. He doesn't want you and me to enjoy life. He doesn't want us to have the glory which God has prepared for us. We are told in Colossians 1 27, is a Christ in you the hope of what? Glory. So Satan wants to steal that glory. He doesn't want us to have that glory. His target is to remove that glory. He doesn't want us to be established. He doesn't want us. And that is why he's out to frustrate us. He's out to ensure that that's wisdom, which is a principal term, which is so important, is out to take it from us. Jesus. Now we are told from scripture, where we read, we read Proverbs 16, powerful scripture. I love Proverbs 16 very well. One of my delight. Because when you look at Proverbs 16, you see so many things there that they're very sweet. It's like taking some ice cream. Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16 verse 2. It says, all the ways of a man is clean in his own eyes. Hayala. <laughs> Mankind. Every man you see, man born into this world, all his ways is clean. Especially when you see men that are old, men that are matured, men that are above 40 and all of that. He said, look, I'm a man of myself. 
I'm able to direct myself. I'm able to tell, look, look, I'm not a boy. I'm a man. <laughs> you are a man. No man, whether 40 or whether 50 or 60 or 70 or no man is capable of directing himself. No man is capable of directing himself without God. Without the wisdom of God, you will not be able to direct yourself. Like I have said during this wisdom sermon, the previous one I told you that mankind is doomed by default. Mankind is doomed by default. Whatever means you used to come into this world, once you are born into this world, you are already doomed by default. Default in the sense that you are born into a darkness and you are born with a dark candle as we see in Ephesians 5 verse 8. Man is born with a dark candle. He's born with a dark candle. Let somebody read that. Let's see it. Ephesians 5, verse 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Thank you very much. So you see, everyone in this world, once you come into this world, you are born darkness. That is, your candlelight is dark. You are born a sinner. You don't need to commit sin to become a sinner. We know that already. You are just born a sinner. The wisdom of God is not in you. You are going to be operating either satanic wisdom or man's wisdom. That is what you will operate. You are either going to operate satanic wisdom or man's wisdom. And the problem is Satanic wisdom or man's wisdom is not able to lead you to God. It's not able to lead you in the path of life, in the path of God, in the way of wisdom of God. It's not able. It's not able. Because the mind is defective. The mind of man is defective. The spirit of man is defective. The soul of man, the living soul of man is doomed because it's incapable of knowing what to do. And that is why there is need for the quickening spirit. Without the quickening spirit, man is doomed because man still operate in the last Adam as we can see in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 45. He said the last Adam was made a living soul uh, the first Adam was made a living soul and the last Adam which is Christ a quickening spirit a quickening spirit and every one of us need that quickening spirit that quickening spirit is the spirit of Christ is the Holy Ghost and that is the spirit of wisdom tell your neighbor the spirit of wisdom it's the spirit of wisdom it is that spirit of wisdom the wisdom of God once you have it then you are able to be directed. You are able to walk in the path of righteousness. And we are told in Proverbs 16 verse 7. He said when a man ways pleases the Lord, he will make what? His enemy to be at peace with him. And that is the problem we are having today in the world. A lot of people are not doing the things that pleases God. Many people are doing things that God does not like. And when God is not the light in a man, there is problem. When God is not happy with you, when God is not pleased with you, there is big problem. When a man's way pleases the Lord, he will make even his enemies to be at peace with him. That is, you will have peace. But when God is annoyed with you, when your way does not please God, there is a big problem. You know, we are told 
in Proverbs 16 where we read verse 4. He said, he has created everything for what? For his own pleasure. For his own enjoyment. For his own delight. He said, even the evil. For the day of evil. You be wondering, do evil delight God? <laughs> if God is punishing you, he's not annoyed. <laughs> he's punishing you, he's not annoyed. Huh? When people that rebel against the government of Nigeria, all those rebel criminals and all of that, and they decide to take them to court and sentence them to, to prison, prison centers, they send them to Kuche prison or any of the prisons. Is the president annoyed? The president is happy. It's so very good for you. That's useless person. Just stop him. In. Just stop him. In. So you see it. When a man's way pleases the Lord, he will make his enemies to be at peace with him. And that is why when God is pleased with you, he gives you what? Peace. Tell your neighbor peace. You will have peace of mind. When, when God is annoyed with you, when God is vest with you, hey, problem. You trouble him, he will trouble you. He will trouble you. He will make the enemy to come and trouble you. The enemy will trouble you and he will give you vexation of spirits. He will make you to be annoyed. Things will be bad. Things will not be working. Things will be wondering what is happening. Any nation that is always offending God, provoking God, making God, any nation or a people that you see they are not making God happy, God always deal with them. Even his own people. His own people. His own people. So you see it. So that is why we must be careful. We must try to please God. We must try to make God happy. We must try. And the only way that you can please God is to use the wisdom of God. It's only the wisdom of God that will be able to direct you. Without the wisdom of God, you will not be able to be directed. Like I said, mankind is not able to direct itself. I've said before, I said, my philosophy and it's the same with that of the Bible if you look at it. Mankind is what? A what time machine with the power of volition moving to have life or death or destruction. That's who mankind is. What am I saying? God has created mankind and he programmed mankind with time. How long you will spend on this, in this earth here? Your pilgrimage here on earth, how long you will stay on earth? has been determined by God. He knows it. It is you that don't know how long you will stay. He knows every person how long. He has ordained it. He has appointed it. How long you will stay. You see it? Now, it is either you are moving towards destruction or you are moving towards life. And this we can see when we read the Bible very well. We are Bible students. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 and 20. When Moses gathered the children of Israel and told them, he said, God has, he, uh, he said, Moses was telling them, after gathering them and told them, look, he said, I call heaven this day to be a record between me and you, that God has set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. He said, but I advise you, choose life, that you and your children and your descendants may live. He went for that in 20. He said, obey the commandment of God Obey the voice of God. He said, cleave to it. Be bonded with it. Be bonded with the word of God, the commandment of God. He said, because he is the life. The length of your days is in him. And this is where I got the revelation that Jesus Christ is our life Lord. Tell your neighbor is our life Lord. Without Jesus, you are doomed. Jesus is our life Lord. He's the one that determines how long we will live on earth. He's the one that will determine. If your way pleases him, you will live long. And how are you going to live long? It is wisdom. Tell your neighbor wisdom. It's the wisdom of God. We are told in Proverbs, you go to Proverbs 4, Proverbs 8. He said, look, on his right hand, there is what? Uh, on, his right, on his right hand is what? Long life. On his left hand is what? 
For the, on the left hand, it is riches and honor. Riches and honor is on his left hand. You understand? So you see it. To tell you long life is better than all these riches and honor. Long life is on your right hand. And on your left hand is riches and honor. It's riches and honor. We pray God give us on Sunday the mind in the of Jesus. Now we know that Proverbs 16 verse 25 he said there is a way that seemeth right unto a man the end thereof is what? Death. A man without Christ all his ways is clean and he will see a way and be going. For him that way is correct but the end thereof is death is destruction. That is so man require divine guidance. He require the spirit of God. That with the red man in the mind, the Lord Jesus. Man require the spirit of God. And that is why the spirit of God is what you cannot do without. That spirit of God is powerful. You can give yourself. Can you give yourself the spirit of God? You understand? It is a gift of God. It is God that gives us. We get it freely. And the gift of God, salvation package, there is wisdom inside. There is the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation knowledge. All these things are inside. The spirit of quick understanding, the spirit of the fear of God, everything is encapsulated inside. Inside. If you go to 1 Corinthians 12, verse uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, you see the nine gifts of the spirit. I said this, the gifts of the word of wisdom is number one. Very powerful gift. The word of wisdom. And in James 1, we are told how to get it. James 1 verse 5, verse 6. He says, is there anyone that lacks wisdom? Let him ask. And God will give freely to that one. But there is a condition for it. You must ask in what? Faith. You must not ask with doubtness whether I will I'll get it or not. You must ask with faith. And if you ask with faith, he will give, give it to you. Remind to the Lord Jesus. You see it? It is freely given. It is freely given to us. Now let's see. Even Jesus Christ that is wisdom personified. We are told his wisdom himself. Jesus Christ have to have the spirit of wisdom on, on him. Before he was born, Isaiah told us about it. Let's read it. Let's see it. So if Jesus Christ will go for the spirit of wisdom, is it you that will not grow for the spirit of wisdom? Go to Isaiah. Let's read. Isaiah 11. A smart reader will read 1 to 3 for us. Let's see. Isaiah 11. 1 to 3. Be fast. He said, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of his root. Listen, oh, who are they talking about? Who know? Huh? No. They are talking of Jesus. Who is the son? Who, who, uh, they say a rod will come out of the stem of Jesse. Who is Jesse? David. You don't forget David. David is the son of Jesse. Are you getting it? Huh? Out of that lineage, they are telling you the lineage. You know, it is a prophet, it is it, a prophetic word. Isaiah. God gave him prophetic word. And he prophesied. He said this. Now a rod will come out of the stem of Jesse. He's talking about David. David is going to be anointed king. Then out of that. This is the lineage of David. You understand? He's talking of the covenant lineage. He said now. A branch. Something will come out. What is it? A branch shall grow out of his root. A branch shall grow out of his root. Listen. He said the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge. And of the fear of the Lord. Listen. It shall make him of quick understanding. In the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge after the sight of the eyes. Neither reprove outside the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and will reprove with equity 
for the make of the earth. Thank you very much. You see it. Now, when you talk of wisdom, you we always talk of knowledge, understanding, equity, justice, reproof, correction, everything. Because it is by wisdom you are able to do all of this. Now, we are telling you that Jesus Christ is going to be filled with the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, quick understanding, and the fear of God. That is not going to judge by sight. Are you getting it? Or by the hearing of his ears. Imagine Jesus is a judge in a court of law. And they bring criminals, bring uh, people, the plaintiff and the defendant, all of them, they come. How do you think Jesus will judge? He says he's not going to judge by what they are saying. You know criminal, he will go there and be telling lies. He'll be telling lies as if the lie is true. He will bring it. I have a witness. I have a witness. Before you ask him for witness, he tell you, I have a witness. I have two, three witness. He's saying lie, and he's telling you he has witness to support his lie. <laughs> because I say when there is two witness, you understand? Then that thing is true. So he is going to bring witness. Say I'm bringing witness. Say I have witness too. Even theory. That Jesus will not judge by sight. No, the hearing. He look at you. <laughs> the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of counsel. The spirit of quick understanding. He will know what has happened. That was the one God gave Solomon. When they brought the two halots, those two women that were fighting, who is the owner of the child? And Solomon looked at them. Now me get the child. Now me get every. They were fighting for the child. Look at the first assignment of a king. And they were looking at the king. If there's a king that doesn't know, he will say, call me the oracle. Bring in the disciple. Let them come and do oracle. The diviner. Let them come and check. <laughs> not where wisdom is. Wisdom does not need a diviner. Because wisdom is a diviner of himself. Every secret will be revealed. Every secret will be revealed. The word of knowledge will come. The word of wisdom. The word of quick understanding. And when he looked at two of them, this one saying is my child. This one saying, King Solomon was not there when the thing happened. It didn't happen overnight. He wasn't there. And King Solomon said, call his soldier, bring the sword, bring the machet, cut this child, this living child into two. Give half parts to this woman, give half part to this woman, and everything will be okay. And the elders, they look at Solomon, ah, which kind of king will get so? This, your father did not behave like this, so. Kill a child in the king's palace? Ah, we don't enter trouble. They said they don't enter one chance. This kind of king. Because, I mean, if you look at it naturally, it looks like foolishness. The one child, why are they going to kill it? They can say, okay, if you put a quarrel, bring the child, let the king take care of the child, or put the child somewhere, and all of that. They'll begin to look for ways. He said, let's kill the child. That is his solution. <laughs> <laughs> he was operating in a higher wisdom, wisdom from above. And why he said that? He was looking at them. And the one that does not have the child, long live the king. Yes, it's okay like that. Good judgment. Kill the child. Good judgment. Then the one that have the child said, ah, please, don't kill my child, though. I beg you, don't kill my child. If the, let her have it. When the child grows, it's my child. The child will find me. Give up. Don't kill my child. Please, I beg you. The king looked at them. He said, give this last one. He's the owner of the child. And let this will clear up from here. And people surprised. Ha! How did this man know? How did he know? Wisdom. Tell him about wisdom. Wisdom from above. Wisdom from above. Wisdom from above. He will give you insight over a thing. And people will be surprised. How did you know? How did you manage? And in the Bible we see many times wisdom is in display. A king dreamt. 
And he has even forgotten his dream. He said you should come and tell him a dream that you have forgotten. <laughs> they haven't tell him that. Ah, this kind of thing. They know they ask somebody this kind of thing. How can you be telling all the dream you have forgotten? Not we are not the one that dreamed it. That is the thing you are asking. No king asks this kind of thing. It's a difficult thing. Ah, he said hey, you are playing with me. I will kill all of you. <laughs> you who are playing with me, you don't know. I dreamt and I forgot it. You have to tell me the dream. And the interpretation of the truth. <laughs> you see such. But Daniel. The one that have the spirit. The excellent spirit of God. They call him all by each other. The one with the excellent spirit of God. God revealed it to him. In the night season. Nothing can be hidden from God. So God showed them. Told them. So that spirit is what help you to navigate. He'll be able to direct us. This is where to go and this is where to go. And we need that spirit to be able to wage war. Without that spirit, you will not be able to wage war against the enemy because the enemy is very strong. I have said before, I've told you about the enemy. Satan is <laughs> powerful. Any person that is thinking Satan is not powerful. Then you are wasting time. Like some people used to pray, Satan fall down and die. Die, die. They will be doing their leg. Die, 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 die. Hey! Satan will look at you, me. <laughs> now me, they die. <laughs> if I bend out your leg, <laughs> you will not do Satan fall down and die again. <laughs> look at you. A mortal being telling me a spirit <laughs> to die. How is that possible? Huh? Did you see throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation? Did Jesus kill Satan anytime? So it is ignorance. You want to kill Satan. What do you do with Satan? Who can tell me? What do you do with Satan? Huh? Somebody said bind him. Of course you can bind him. Which can chain him. You understand? You can chain him. But depending on the Satan, there are many different ones. If you go and meet a powerful one, you will not be able to chain him. <laughs> if you chain him, you will break it. <laughs> you can cast him. Yes, it's a spirit. You cast out spirit. You resist him. Say resist the devil and he will flee. You will fight Satan with understanding. You need wisdom. A superior wisdom to fight Satan. You need a superior wisdom to fight Satan. You don't just fight Satan with anyone. And the Bible made it clear. The Bible understands. And that is why Apostle Paul always tells us, do not be ignorant of the device of the devil. And this is what he told us in Ephesians. In Ephesians, he made it clear to us. Ephesians 6, verse 12. Even from 10. He said, put on the whole armor of God. God. You have to put on the whole armor of God. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and power. What did I, when we are looking at wisdom, we say in John, uh, in Proverbs 4 verse 7, we say wisdom is the principal thing. Now they are telling you, see principalities. <laughs> wisdom is the principal thing. Now they are telling you of some principal that we have other principles that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. These principalities, they have wisdom too. They have wisdom too. They have wisdom. So you must have understand that they have wisdom. They operate in their own wisdom too. Demonic wisdom. Evil genius. All manners of... When you talk of power, they have power. If they don't have power, Jesus will not be talking of them. The power. Apostle will not be talking of them. He said these are people that have powers. Spiritual wickedness in high... And their power is a dangerous one because they are wicked. They are not quite, quite, they are wicked. They like to do evil. They like to do mischief. When they are, ah, ah, okay, if you want to know how bad Satan is, eh? Go and read Job. You see what Job did, uh, what Satan did to Job. If it's a good thing, he will go to a place, kill every person, leave one to go and tell the story of how the killing was. 
And when that person is telling the story, he, will, he has destroyed again. Send one to come and tell you the story. Something that will give you heart attack. By the time they tell you theory like that, you will fail. <laughs> Always leave you one person. <laughs> See, go and tell the person what you saw. <laughs> the kind of thing. Because if you don't see, if you don't hear, you don't see, you will not be frightened. But that person will come and tell you. He said, look, we saw fire, bomb, fire, they come from up. Fire, everywhere, fire. Satan is powerful, but not more powerful than Jesus. Jesus is more powerful than Satan. And that is our strength. Jesus is our strength. His wisdom, it is wisdom he used to defeat Satan. He used wisdom to defeat Satan. And this is what is expressed. You remember Matthew? In Matthew 16, verse 18 and 19, <laughs> Jesus was talking. He was talking about wisdom. It is wisdom you use to overcome the enemy. He was telling us, we didn't understand, in Matthew 16, 18, 19. He said, look, let somebody read Matthew 16, 18 and 19 for us. Let's see. He was talking to Peter. Some of us, I say, uh, by this rock, you think it is rock he's talking of. He's talking of wisdom. It's wisdom he was talking about. By this rock, wisdom. Jesus is the wisdom. That you need superior wisdom to overcome the enemy. Read for us. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gate of hell shall not be. Now listen, that rock he's talking of is wisdom. It's Christ he's talking of. Not Peter the stone. He's talking of rock, the Christ. Christ is the rock. Are you getting it? Christ is a solid rock. He said, upon this rock I will build my church. That he said that he's going to build his church on the wisdom of God. A very solid wisdom. That the church will be builded. And the, you saw where we read in Proverbs 24. He said, look, a house is built by what? Wisdom. is established by knowledge and understanding. I will be, he said, what? The gate of hell shall not do what? prevail against it. The gate of hell will not be able to overcome it. That is what he's telling you. The enemies, the gate of hell, the enemies of the kingdom of God will not be able to withstand it. And this is what is also expressed in Matthew. If you go to Matthew 7, 24, 25, 26 is what he explained to us. Is there anyone that hear this saying of mine and do it? It's like it to a wise man and is like it to that man that built his house upon the rock, upon a solid rock, upon the wisdom of God. Anyone that heareth this saying of mine and doeth it is like it to a wise man. They have builded his house upon a solid rock. So you see it. It's, that man built his house upon a solid rock. He said, but anyone that heareth this saying of mine and do not do it, if you reject this saying of mine, you disobey this saying of mine, he said, it's like it to a foolish man that built his house upon what? Sand. And when the enemy will come and all of that, he said that house will fall. Great is the fall of that. He's this talking of the enemies. When he say wind will blow, this, all these are trials and tribulations that will come. Problems. Problems. Different things that will come. He said, and that house will fall. Great is the fall of that house. We pray God give us on Sunday the mind. Jesus. So we have seen Satan is out to overcome us. And what is it he's targeting? He's targeting the wisdom of God. Tell your neighbor the wisdom of God. So before we are going to look at how do we overcome, we need to understand quickly. You understand? Why is Satan targeting the wisdom of God? Why is he targeting it? What is, why? Why is he so after the wisdom of God? Why does he target it? The wisdom of God. We'll quickly look at that very fast. Now, before we look at three points that will help us to overcome the enemy. But first of all, let's look at why Satan we have to move quickly. Today's midweek service. Let's move quickly. We know to have wisdom and understanding why the enemy is against us taking delivery of the wisdom of God. Number one, his mission 
is to prevent you from the light of God. That is the gift of salvation. You know the wisdom of God is the gift of salvation. It's inside. I told you it's part of the package. It's a premium package. Everything is encapsulated inside. Salvation. When you hear salvation, the wisdom of God is inside. We are told in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. He said, God have not given us the spirit of fear, but of what? Of power and of love and of sound mind. That sound mind is the wisdom of God. Everything is embedded. Now Satan is out to see that the light of God does not come to you. And what are the scripture for that? Of course, we can see in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4. He said, in whom the God of this world blinded their minds and hearts so that the glorious gospel of Christ is not reflected on them. Satan is out. He doesn't want the light of God to come to you. He doesn't want. Also, we remember in Job 33, 30, he said to withdraw his soul from going down the pit to be enlightened with the light of the living. Satan wants you to be in darkness. So he doesn't want the light of God to come. And that's why you see also in Isaiah, Isaiah 16 verse 2, he said darkness will cover the earth and cross darkness the people. That is the plan of Satan. Remain in darkness. Don't leave darkness. So that is number one target. He doesn't want you. Because if you come to light, the wisdom of God is in the light. Number two. His mission is to prevent you from getting contact with the wisdom of God. From getting contact with the word of God. You know the word of God is the wisdom of God. So his target is to see that you don't have contact with the wisdom of God. If by chance you have contact with it, ah, yeah, yeah, you will come and steal it. You will come and steal it. You must not have contact with the word of God. So anywhere they are preaching the word of God, the undiluted word of God, truth, the word of truth, Satan will come and ensure that you don't hear. He will distract you. He will cause you to sleep. He will cause every kind of thing to ensure that you don't hear the word of God. You don't hear. You don't receive it. You don't believe it. He's happy when you don't receive it. What is this man saying? I don't know what he's saying. He said, yes. He's saying nonsense. This man is saying nonsense. Don't believe. Don't believe. Satan is happy. And this we can see. Why? The word of God is the wisdom of God. The word that comes out from the mouth of God contains what? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of God. So he doesn't want you to have that wisdom. He doesn't want you to have the knowledge. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 24. He said Christ, that is the word, is the wisdom of God and also the power of God. He doesn't want you to have that power. And also if you go to Mark, in Mark 4 verse 15, we see also what Satan did. The person that have received the word, what he came. Let somebody read Mark 4 15 for us. It's matter. Mark 4 15. You see what Satan did. He doesn't want you to receive the word. But if you perchance receive the word, he will come and steal it. He will come to take it if you are lying. Mark 4 15. Quickly. He said, These are they that fall by the wayside. You know the parable of the sword. The, the uh, person that went to sow the seed. That is the word of God. He said, These are they that fell by the wayside. Where the word is sown. When they have heard, Satan comment immediately. And take the word that was sown in their heart. Thank you very much. You see it? Why is he coming to steal the word? Word that he will not use. He doesn't want to make his order, but he doesn't want to because he knows if that word is there, the word will grow. The word is a righteous seed. It will grow and begin to produce good fruits. And he doesn't want that. You will have peace of mind with that word. You will have joy with that word. You will have every good thing with that. He doesn't want that. He will attack you. He doesn't want that to happen in the mind. In the mind. Jesus. So we need to know all of this so that we'll be able to know how to strategize. Now number three. Satan makes you to remain foolish to the world. He does not want you to hear the word or the wisdom of what. He doesn't want it so that you don't become converted. <laughs> you see it? He wants you to be adamant to the word, for you to be rebellious to the word. Let us material read you see what in Matthew, uh, Mark, Mark 4, read 11 and 12 for us. You see 
Because Jesus Christ gave a parable, the parable of the sword and all of that. And they didn't understand the parable. They were confused. And later the disciples, they came to me. They said, that parable, we don't understand. What are you saying? And all of that. And Jesus Christ now revealed some secret to us. Mark 4, 11 and 12. It's Matthew that read for us quickly. And he said unto them, he said, unto you it is given. These are the chosen ones, the disciples of Jesus. He said, unto you it is given. To know the mystery of the kingdom of God. You know the mystery. Wisdom is a mystery. We've seen that before. First Corinthians 2 verse 7. That the wisdom of God is a mystery. The hidden mystery of the kingdom. Uh -huh. He said, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom. He said, unto them that are without. Those that are without. Uh huh. He said, all things are done in parable. Continue. He said, that seeing they may see and not perceive. They will see, but they will not perceive. Hearing they will hear and not understand. Least at any time, they should be converted. They are saying should be converted. Forgive me. Thank you very much. You see it. Satan knows to where if you hear the word of God, your heart will be prick. You say, ah, so I don't do this kind of thing. Ooh, please. God, forgive me. I repent of my sin. And you give your life to Christ. So that is what he doesn't want. So he will not allow it. Are you getting it? So he will ensure he will make you have a dull ear. He will block it and all of that so that you will not repent. If you repent, you will not be converted. So you will not repent. So you see, so those that are without Christ, they are in problem. They will not understand. You, they will, even when they hear the word of God, they will just be looking at They will be looking foolishly. Satan wanted to continue be foolish. And every foolish person is anyone that does not uh, obey. The, you cannot keep the word of God. You cannot obey. You don't even understand what the word of God is saying. So you see it. And that is a, a plan of Satan. We pray God give us on Sunday the mind to the Lord Jesus. Now we go to number four. We are going to be moving very fast. Number four. He makes you to be a hater. A hater or enemy of the wisdom of God. <laughs> Something that is going to help you. He will make you to hate it. Do you know why I make you to hate it? Because if you hate the word of God, secret will not be revealed to you. We are told in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 and 10. He said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. The things which God has prepared for those that love him. He said, but he has revealed it to who? To love us. If you are a lover of God, secret will be revealed to you. But when you hate the word of God, you hate wisdom, secret will not be revealed to you. So that is the plan of Satan. We know in Deuteronomy 29, 29. He says every secret belongs to the Lord. And he reveals it to whomsoever he wants to reveal it. Satan doesn't want you to get secret. The knowledge and understanding of God. He doesn't want us. We pray God give us on Sunday the mind in the name of Jesus. Now we we'll go to number five. Number five. Satan mission. <laughs> oh, it's mandate is to steal, to kill, and destroy. His ultimate mandate is to destroy the children of God. He doesn't want them to make it to heaven. John 10, 10. Jesus Christ made that very explicit. He said, the thief committed to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I have come that they may have what? Life. And have it more abundantly. In my name of Jesus. Number six. The enemy wants you to commit sin. Satan, the devil, and his cohort, they want you to commit sin. And when you commit sin, they want you to be helpless, to be defenseless. You remember the word of God? In Isaiah 59 verse 1, <laughs> it says, not as if God's hand is too short. He said, but your sin has separated you from God. So that is the plan of Satan, so that when you commit sin and you do not repent, God will separate himself from you. Deuteronomy 28, verse 10, the same thing. Second Chronicles 7, if you look at 14, the same thing. Now we go to number 7. Number 7, Satan will cause you to fear him and glory him instead of God. <laughs> and because of that, the wrath of God will be upon you. You see, people that are praising Satan, people that are promoting the enterprise of Satan, you see, when you are promoting the enterprise of Satan, what did the Bible say? It said wisdom will promote you, will give you honor. But 
The reward of foolishness is what? Destruction. <laughs> the reward of foolishness. The reward of wisdom is promotion. But the reward of foolishness is destruction. Satan is out to destroy us. And we must not allow him to do that in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, all the things, these are the strategy. When you know this strategy of Satan, you will avoid it. You will know how to overcome Satan in the mighty name of Jesus. And we are looking at the last one here. The last one for this. Okay, I think number seven is the last one. Number seven is the last one. Also, let me give you scripture. Second Samuel 22, 18. Then Psalm 18, 17. Uh, let somebody read Psalm 18, 17 to us. Let's hear. Psalm 18, 17. Psalm 18, 17. You know, like I told you, Satan is very strong. Satan is powerful. Don't think Satan is not powerful. He's powerful. You see Psalm 18 telling us about the enemy that is too strong for us. It's too strong if God does not help you. I just say, this is, he said, he delivered me from my strong enemy. For them which hated me. For they were too strong for me. Thank you very much. You see it. It is only God that can deliver us from this enemy. Satan, the devil. Because he's a strong enemy. He was a strong enemy. So he'll be able to deliver us. Now Jesus. Now quickly, we have looked at the strategy of Satan. Now we know his mission. We understand his way. How do we overcome him? Quickly, we are just looking at three points. How to overcome him? Number one, you must have the wisdom of God inside you. You must have the wisdom of God inside you. And this we can see in Colossians 1 verse 27. It says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. For you to succeed in this kingdom, you must have the wisdom of God inside you. You must have Christ inside you. You must have the power of God inside you. Without that, it's a, there's a problem. There's a problem. And how can we have the wisdom of God inside us? We must be born of God. It is anyone that is born of God that is able to have the wisdom of God. You remember what Jesus told uh, Nicodemus in John 3? From 3 to 6, he says, if a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He says, if a man be baptized of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So you need to be born of God. You need to be born of God. That is number one. If you are not born of God, we will not be talking. Is there anyone that is born of God? Is there another person that is in light? You are in light. Are you getting it? Light is in you. You are in light. The light of God is inside you. We are told in uh, Isaiah 16, verse 1 and 2. Is that rise and shine? For your light is come. Darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness will say, But for you, arise and shine, for your light is come. Number two. Number two, you must be inside the wisdom of God. You must be inside the wisdom of God. You see the first one I said, Christ will be inside you. You understand? That is you have knowledge and understanding of Christ when the Christ but this one now you have to be inside the wisdom of God and the power of God. And to be inside you will see the word of God let us know in 2 Corinthians there are three ways we can be inside. Let me explain that for us so that we can enjoy it. For you when we say the inside. The inside. Some people are outside. If you are outside and Christ is inside you, Satan can draw your leg. When you are sleeping, you begin to draw your leg. So it's better to be inside. Tell your neighbor it's better to be inside. And to be inside, these are the things you need to do. You must love Christ. You must love wisdom so much. You must cry after wisdom. You must seek wisdom as if your life depends on it. You don't play with wisdom. You must search it. You must prepare it. You must declare it. You know what we talked about wisdom? How to do... Wisdom should be your delight. Day and night, you will be a lover of wisdom. You must love wisdom too much. Everything, when people see you, you are a man of wisdom. Are you getting it? Solomon was a man of wisdom. Solomon, they said, look, Solomon, everything was studying everything. And when he was studying it, he was doing it with the wisdom of God. And this we can see in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14 up to 17. He said, the love of Christ constrained us. The love of Jesus 
discipline us, constrain us, and we just judge. If one die for all, then we are all there. Because Christ died for you, you no longer live according to yourself. You live according to the wisdom of Christ, wisdom of God. You see it? He says, if any man be in Christ, if you are inside the wisdom of God, you are what? A new creature. If you are inside the power of God, you are a new creature. He says, all things are passed away and all things become new. You become an indomitable spirit that speaks fire of redemption. Satan cannot get to you. He must meet Christ first before he comes to you. You are not inside Christ. This is what is explained. You, you know, if you go to John, in John 15, we are told, in John 15 by 7, he said, if you abide in me, I abide in you. If you enter me and I enter you, hoyala. are you getting it? Let somebody read it for us. Let's see. Uh, John 1, John 15 verse 7. If you, guys, if you enter me and my word enter you, You shall ask whatever you will, and it shall be done unto you. There is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciple. As the father has loved me, so have I loved thee. Continue. You see, love is talking about you will love God so much, eh? in fact, you are inside. You lay it. And read five for us. Let's enjoy five. I like where he say, "Without me, you can do nothing." <laughs> yeah. He said, "He said, I'm the vine. Ye are the branches. If you abide in me, and I in you, the same bring much fruit. For without me." You can do nothing. Thank you very much. You see it without the wisdom of God, you can do nothing. You cannot overcome Satan. How, how you want to overcome Satan? When even Satan, that is uh, the angels of God, eh? they cannot overcome Satan without Jesus. You ask yourself: If the angels of God, they cannot defeat Satan without using the wisdom of God, eh? is it you that will be able? So you see it because it is power past power. Wisdom pass, wisdom. We pray God give us a Sunday the mind and more Jesus. Now we move. I've given you scripture for that. John 15, 5, John 15, 7, Azar 1, 18 to 19, Job 36, 11 to 12, Job 22, 21 to 29. There are many scriptures. Now we go to number three, the last one for this evening. This number three is pregnant. We have three, one, three, two, three, three. Yes. You must use the wisdom that you know now. You must use and trust the wisdom of God to be your defense, your shield, and your great reward in the battle of life. He will help you to overcome all your adversity. Now, we are going to learn the process. Because the wisdom of God, when you are inside Christ, are you getting this? Christ has swallowed up you up. But you must still know how to fight Satan. There is a strategy on fighting Satan. Number one strategy. Your faith in God must be solid. Every Christian, most Christians you see, we believe. When the word of God, we hear the word of God, we believe. But the problem about our belief is that some of us don't mix it with faith. And if you don't mix your belief with faith, there is a problem. And this we can see in Hebrew. In Hebrew 4, from 2 3, he'll be telling us. They did not enter God's rest because they did not miss their belief with faith. They did not see peace because they did not miss their belief with faith. What do we mean by missing your belief? For faith to complete, are you getting it? There must be belief inside. Some people you ask them, he said, I have faith, but there is no belief. You ask somebody now. Do you have faith you will marry this year? He said, I believe God I will marry this year. You have faith? Eh, if God, if God have one time, he's the one that knows. Now, if he says so, is that faith? <laughs> is that faith? You see it? Whenever you hear faith, it's now. You see it with confidence. 
It is because you believe, you have faith, that this year I'm marrying, this year, this year I'm doing my wedding. To tell you, I mean what I'm saying, I can give you the date that this year, by November 22, November this is my marriage. Is that, but you are so sure? Of course. That's why I gave you the date. That day is my birthday, and that is the day I want to do my wedding ceremony. You don't see the wife. Ah, uh -uh. the wife is coming. She's on her way coming. <laughs> you don't see the husband. Ah, uh -uh. the husband is available. It's coming. Are you getting it? You don't even have a wife. You don't bet by faith, because of the belief. You believe. You speak, and you begin to walk towards it, and you'll be shocked. It will happen. It is a confidence. The same way you say, my job this year, I know the pastor, but I must get my job this year. I must get my job. The word of God, you speak the word of God until you come alive. Wait, now, ah, you get local. Is it lock? It is not lock. If now lock, go use lock, buy car. They get for parking lot. When you do that, say, okay, this car, I have faith, give me. <laughs> Make it slap you. <laughs> not lock. Yeah? It is by faith. We pray God give us on Sunday to my to the Lord Jesus. There is a violent faith. He said, from the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence. But violence, take it by force. Whatever you demand, you want, God will give it to you to my to the Lord Jesus. In this our era of light, God will light you up in the my to the Lord Jesus. So now, you must miss your belief with faith. Now, to support what I'm saying, Hebrew 11, what did Hebrew 11 tell us? Hebrew 11 by, uh, verse 6. He said, with that faith, it is impossible to do what? Please God. He said, anyone that comes to God must believe that he is. Hiya! What do you mean by he is? When they are talking of God, God is not a president of a nation. Are you getting it? Say like we have uh, the president of Nigeria, the president of Cameroon, the president of Ghana, the president of uh, America. That is not God. Though. He said, heaven is my throne. The earth is my footstool. I rule over the affairs of men. Every nation. You see it? He's the king of kings. The lord of lords. So he's God almighty. We must have that understanding. You must know who God is. You say, anyone that comes to him must believe that he is. And is what? A rewarder of those that didn't seek him. A rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And what did the Bible say? Hayala. He told us in First uh, John verse five four. He said, "Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. This is the victory that over you need faith to fight Satan. You need faith. Without faith, you cannot fight Satan." We pray God give us on Sunday the mind and more Jesus. Your victory is in your faith. We pray God. Now we finish faith. We go to 3 2. Seek God help in time of trouble. Ah, yalla. Mark 7 7 to 8. He said, You have not received because you have not asked. Ask anything, you will receive it. We are told in Psalm 46, verse 1. Psalm 46, verse 1. He said, The Lord is our very present help in time of what? Trouble. In this world, there is trouble, there is tribulation. We are told also, is there anyone that will live godly in Christ will suffer what? Persecution. There is always persecution, trial and tribulations. Lock yourself inside, room, problem will come. You they work out for those, say, I don't want to offend any person. They will offend you. They will pour water on your body. They will insult you. I'm telling you, that is how they will be. You that say you don't want to offend any person. You are trying to be JJJ, they will match your leg. Say, ah, then we say, hey, you match my leg. You say, hey, you know they talk. I say, I can see you whether you know go talk. Eh? That's what, you know they talk. <laughs> Is that why you match my leg? Yes, I want you to talk. Make I hear you talk. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is it. So, we must be diligent. You understand? We must know that God is with us in the mind. In the mind Jesus. God is always with us in the mind. In the mind Jesus. So, we should not fear their fear. We must seek for God's help. God will help us. There are matters we cannot handle by ourselves. That is the truth. If you are trying to handle it, let me give you number one. Matters you cannot handle. How many of you can provide for themselves? Can you provide for yourself? Me, I cannot provide for myself. You think the salary you are receiving that is taking care of you? The salary. 
Is there any person the salary is enough? Let me see your hand. It's enough for you at the end of the month. <laughs> the salary is never enough. Some people, when they earn 50,000 per month, they say, if only I can earn 100. When the money increased to 200, ah, 200 is more. My problem is more than if I can earn 300. The money increased to 300. <laughs> eh? When it is 400, they still be saying falling. There was somebody working any 400. He was still coming to borrow money from our cooperative. A lady working with GT, he earns 600. When he came to come and beg for facilities and all of that, I saw he brought her pay slip. I said, how much is that? 600 or something thousand per month. I said, what do you do with it? He says, my problem is many. I said, what are your problems? He said, my car, I'm financing it. My this, my that. I have two people living with me. The money is not enough. <laughs> You have only two people living with you and the money is not there now. What are people like six, seven, eight on one person? <laughs> this is somebody earning 600,000. A banker. The money is not enough. And it's come, she's coming to borrow. She will pay this, pay this, pay this. I said, well, like a month, how much do you spend? He said, ah. He said, when I check my expense, it's about 800,000 every month. <laughs> she's earning 600. Her expenses monthly is 800. I said, how do you do it? He says, God, that is heaven. It is difficult. It is difficult. You see it? You think that lady, if they increase her salary to 800, the problem will go to 1 million. <laughs> you go. There are people earning a million, 2 million. Eh? Some people in this country, they pay them in foreign currency. If you know how much they receive in a month, if they give you, you will think, you will just start, first of all, you think, before you know, your mouth will go to that level. You see it, your mouth, you begin to things that you need to manage, you will not manage again. You see one fine car, say, I like that car. I like this, I like that, I like this. Your eyes, conversions. <laughs> Before you know problem, we pray God help us in Jesus right today. Ah, okay, so we must seek God help. Another scripture for seeking God help, you remember Psalm 121. I will look unto the hill where I command my help. My help is from the Lord. Then the last one in this theory. 33, we look at the last one. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb. <laughs> you see, you need to learn how Satan and how the angels of God defeated Satan. As we, we are told in Revelation 12, verse 11. We are told they used three things. Three, their strategy was three. Number one, they overcame by what? The blood of the Lamb. Are you the owner of the blood? Eh? <laughs> you want fight Satan? You need the blood, <laughs> and you are not the owner of the blood. If you are an unbeliever, will you plead the blood? Will the blood come to you? An unbeliever say the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. If the blood cannot work because he's an unbeliever. He has nothing. He cannot call the blood. So we need the blood of Jesus, and also they overcame by the word of their testimonies. The word of their testimonies. You must speak what the word of God is saying. You saw Jesus Christ, how he defeated Satan. In Mark, in Matthew 4, you will see it when he fought with Satan. In Matthew 4, you saw it. It is written. It is written. It is written. Now, so when you speak what the word of God say, the word of God say this, the word of God say this, the word of God, that is what you use. It's your weapon. If you see how you fight in Ephesians 6, verse uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, you see it. He said, you take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It's what you use to fight Satan. The word of God. Without the word of God, how can you fight? What is your weapon? Which one are you going to throw? When you throw to you, wait till you throw to that. You understand? Know so it's the word of God. You use the word of God. It is written. It is written. You use it to fight the enemy. You use the word. Now, the last one is, <laughs> you hear me? I say suicide mission in Christ. When you are going to fight Satan, don't try to save yourself. Are you getting it? Some people, they want to fight. They will try to save themselves. If you fight Satan trying to save yourself, then you will lose it. And that's what the Bible says. It says, look, Jesus is speaking that if you try to save yourself, you will lose your life. But if you surrender to me, your life, I will keep your life for you. And my eternal Jesus. That is a secret of battle. And that we call it suicide mission. A suicide person is a dangerous person. When you fight suicide fight, people take away, they run away. That was a fight the angels of God fought with Satan. And Satan 
the devil and his court, the angels and all those fallen angels, they were surprised. They've not seen that kind of fight before. This is suicide mission. If I die, let me die. They say they love not their life unto death. This battle, if we die, make we die. So, they fought that kind of fight. And that was the same fight. Esther, you remember the story of Esther? Esther, that was the same fight Esther fought. When you get to a point, you don't care about your life. Esther said, if I perish, let me perish. He told them, when Mordecai sent a message to her, that look at the problem and all of that. He said, eh? It's okay, go there, Mordecai. Let all the Jews you can find, let them fast for me for three days. He said, and myself and my maids, we are going to fast for three days. After that three days, I will present myself to the king. He said, I know it is against the law. Nobody present himself before the king when the king no call you. He said, I will present myself to the king. He said, but if the king kill me, no problem. If I perish, let me perish. Did Esther perish? No. Esther was ready for death. And when you find, when she came to see the king, when the king saw her, the king was afraid. Esther! And Esther is his beloved wife. He loved Esther so much. And she know, he knows what is the meaning of that. King Asaros. For Esther to come before him, when he didn't call her, and when Esther walked to her, he will, king was afraid, so that the wife know that. He quickly carried it, he said, I beg, my wife know that. <laughs> and that was how he, he kept the life of Esther. Because Esther has fasted. Esther has prayed. Esther is ready. Let me go. I will overcome. So that's how it is. So when you're fighting the enemy, when the enemy see you, that this one is too much, he will leave you. He will run away. He will surrender. We pray God give us a Sunday to my head. Tell Jesus. So we have learned how to overcome the enemies of the wisdom of God. The target of Satan is to corrupt your wisdom. Is to ensure. You see, um, this guy, what is his name? King Solomon was so powerful. But what did Satan do, uh, do to King Solomon? He corrupted his wisdom. He corrupted his wisdom. So that's why we must be careful. Satan wants to corrupt our wisdom. We must not allow it. We must not allow him to corrupt our wisdom. When your wisdom is corrupted, you begin to malfunction. You are no longer, you lack understanding. What is the lacking of understanding? Um, King Solomon knows to go and serve other gods is evil, but he was going to serve them. You see it? So that's why we must guard our wisdom. We must follow after wisdom and guard it with all diligence. In the mind, the Lord Jesus. Let's give Jesus a round of applause. Father Lord, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We appreciate you. We have learned the secret of overcoming the enemies of the wisdom of God. Lord, King of glory, we do not close our service without giving an opportunity. If anyone is here or those viewing us online, if you know you want to give your life to Christ, we are calling three categories of persons. Number one, you want to be born again. You've not given your life to Christ before. You want to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Number two, you were born again and somehow you backslid went about doing what you are not supposed to do. You want to be reconnected back with Jesus. Number three, you do not know your status. If Jesus is to come right now, you are not sure if you rapture with him. All you need to do as you are viewing from YouTube or from Facebook, put your right hand on your chest and say after me. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I believe in your name. I believe you are the Son of God. That you came into this world to die for me. And the third day you raise again from the dead. Thank you for saving, saving me. I have no business with Satan. I reject him completely. In Jesus' precious name, I have prayed. Amen. Now you are born again. Let's give Jesus a round of applause. If you know you've done this prayer online, all you need to do is to look for a Bible-believing church and attend. But if you are in our neighborhood, our vicinity, you come to our church, Living God Covenant Church, True Chapel International. And as you come, you'll be blessed mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. Everyone here that you know you've uh, made that declaration, come out quickly. Let's give Jesus a round of applause. Come out quickly. Let me pray for you. Let's give Jesus a round of applause. I have prayed.